Hello, all my beautiful Cinnabar moths, or any kind of moth you'd like to be. Welcome to the Writer's Triangle, a podcast about publishing and all things books. And today we're going to talk about pitching your book. So I think for a lot of authors, there's some mystery around how do agents and publishing houses make decisions about which books to buy. And I'm very fortunate in that I belong to a lot of indie publishing, different groups and different, go to attend different conferences and such. And I do actually get to talk to agents. I'm always curious how agents make their decisions versus how a press makes their decisions. And I was surprised to find out at least at the, the indie press level that it's all very much the same. And we don't always go based off of, and this might sound horrible, we don't always go based off of our submission pile. And so submitting directly to an agent or submitting directly to a press, you're also in competition with what they find on their own through their own discovery methods. And I found that we all have the same discovery methods, and that is we're all on social media. And we're all talking with authors on social media. And sometimes something an author does can inspire us to want to work with them. And as soon as we, as soon as we're inspired to want to work with someone, they jump the line and we find that we're not being faithful to our submission stack and to our, our TB red list, our TBR. And that's because we're people. And this really is, I say it all the time, is an industry of relationships. So I advise authors to start pitching their book as soon as they start writing their book and have a social media presence. We had one author who I came across their, uh, Nano, I think it's called Nano Rio. Uh, it's a writing competition. I came across their thread about their writing process on Twitter, and it was just really interesting to me. It completely fascinated me, and I liked their tweets, and I started having conversations with them about their process and encouraging them on the way. And through this process of interacting on social media, I became really invested in the book, but I also became really invested in the author and I really wanted them to do well. And when their book was finished, I was like, hey, can you send me the first three chapters? I'd, I'd love to, to read the book. And it was a really rough draft their first three chapters. I read the first three chapters, fell in love, and we got into a development deal where I helped them fix up some of the the storytelling issues that I felt were in the book and ended up publishing their work. And I'm very, very happy. The book is selling well. They're doing great. Um, Their story is not my story to tell. So I'm not going to name them. I'm not going to give any specific names because some of the authors, I know that I'm going to talk about them before I get on the mic and I'll ask them. And other authors, it just comes out spontaneously. And if I don't have permission to tell their story, I don't name them because I just like to be considerate in that way. So that's one way that that really talking about the process of of your book on social media and they have a rather small social media following so it wasn't the size of their following it was just their commitment to this thread where they were honestly documenting their process and I just absolutely just really really enjoyed interacting with them I just really felt connected to them and I thought you know what this is someone I would really like to work with and that's something that all of us are doing in publishing is we're not just deciding if we want to publish the book, we're deciding if we want to work with you. And that really, not to be pointed, but that really is, it's a long-term relationship that we're getting into, right? Um, especially if we're, if you're a small press or an agent, you're going to be working with this person for years and having that be a, a positive process and having it be someone that you believe in, someone that you want to invest your time into, someone that you're, that you feel connected to on a personal level. 
not as so rewarding when you're in their process. And also on the other side of it, if sales aren't what we predict it's going to be, it helps you stay connected. It helps you stay um, as a press. It helps me stay invigorated and excited about promoting and, and entering the books into awards and such. And some awards, they look at the character of the person and some awards have author specific defining things. And so when I'm looking at authors, I'm also thinking about awards and the different awards that require different things from authors. And all of that goes into every book decision that we make. And I'm, I was really surprised that the agents are making these same types of decisions, that they're also thinking about the award process and they're thinking about book lists and book clubs and where will this author fit in and how will this author in how will who this author is impact the promotion of their book and impact the promotion of their favorability for different reading lists and i think that knowing that that the whole package that you and your book are a package from the moment you start writing it I think might help some authors land agents and land book deals. And so that's why I'm, I'm talking about how to pitch your book. And I think one of, one of the best authors experience I've had in terms of a, a book is for the Bleak Fault series that we haven't published yet, but we've purchased and it's coming out in 2024. And uh, Shauna C. Highcroft did such a wonderful job on Twitter um, with the Twitter pitch with fantastic mood boards. I was really struck by the mood board for Bleak Falls. It just spoke to my heart. It really did. The first time I saw it, I just felt so drawn in. It was such a gorgeous mood board. It was black and white. It had nine images. And then it said Bleak Falls in the center and I was like, ooh, I want to know more about that book. Like the name of it was just so interesting to me. And then the the mood board didn't really give anything away. It was so titillating. And what I found titillating about it was there were no faces. And I find mood boards that don't have any faces to be really interesting. And just having abstract details. And it had like a young sort of punk, hard rock kind of vibe to it that was really dark and foreboding and that just sucked me in and then there was like five bullet points about bleak falls and a and a great tagline and i was just like this is a great pitch and i was so drawn in and then as i got to know her as an author i was just really drawn in because i read the pages and i was like this feels like the most non-political political book ever it just spoke to me on so many different levels. It was such a fun story. It was so creative. And I felt, but you know, this could be seen through a political lens. And we're talking about cryptoids. And we're talking about in-groups and out-groups. And we're talking about state police and secret police and, you know, magical towns. And I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to spoil the story. Um, I saw that some people might be drawing some political... Uh, parallels and in the conversations back and forth I really felt like she can handle any angle that the reader is coming to this book from coming to this series from and really she can converse in a way that that felt right and true and authentic and honest to me and it it made me super super excited about the book and super super excited to work with her and what that has led to is there's a year of promotion in advance of the book coming out this book is being promoted even before we have a cover because she's doing an amazing job of creating bonus material and we just have scads and scads of bonus material because this world is so well thought out and i was like wow she gets it and that made me excited, an author who gets it, an author who's speaking about her books and doing all of this before. It's it's just a 
a press's dream, right? Is to get an author who's excited about their book and who's comfortable talking about their book and, and comfortable promoting their book. And that's the vibe that I got through interacting on social media. And it made me super excited about the series and it makes me super excited to talk about it. You see, it's here on the podcast. And that's the kind of thing that you want. That's the reaction that you're trying to create in the person that you query. And I think that's so important, more important than any specific book that I talk about from us. Listen to my energy. Listen to my point of view. Listen to what's inspiring me and know that that's actually what you have to do as an author. And I think it's so unfair and it's it's so hard. And there's so many good books out there written by amazing people that just don't connect with agents and don't connect with the people who are making the decisions because they're not having that 360 view as horrible and trendy and icky as that, you know, 360 view sounds where you're having to look at everything and you're having to be a brand. That's always been the nature of the business. It's not just because of social media. It's really down to do I want to work with you? And the agents are making the same decision. Not only do I have to love your story, but I kind of have to fall in love with you a little bit because we're going to be in a very intimate relationship. And if you're going to be an author, we have authors that do zero promotion of their books once we publish them. And one example of that is Hector Duarte Jr., who I am just... I just love their their view. I love what they're doing in the literary space. They write bilingually, and I just love normalizing language switching. Most of the world is multilingual. Um, and I, I love that point. It's just done so effortless, effortlessly with great storytelling, and the books still feel really accessible. They're not on social media. They don't promote the book at all as far as as I can tell, it's just down to us and um, our PR list, basically, that does all of the promotion. And, you know, we send it out for rewards, for awards and, and different lists. But the reason that I believe in this author so much is we met because I did and we had an open submissions for short stories. So if a press or an agent has an involvement with a, sh a relationship with something that produces short stories, it is absolutely worthwhile if you're a novelist to, to write some short stories and get your name out there in that space. Because we met when I met Hector when we were doing our anthology and I just really enjoy the way his mind works and I enjoy his worldview. And I like talking with him and I enjoy interacting with him. So it makes me excited about him as an author. It makes me excited about what he has to say in the literary space, as I said before. So it's not just about being on social media. It's not the only way to make a connection, but you have to be doing something that is going to get you in front of or engaged with the people who are decision makers, whether that's going to a book fair, whether that's Googling online to see who has open submission calls, whether that's writing for a small, you know, writing short stories or poetry you have to be doing something that's going to have people meet you. And how are you going to do that is really down to you. I have another great example of um, an Instagram, a book that I bought from off of Instagram. I was just going through Instagram and I, I saw some this incredible, incredible art and I was really drawn to the the art it was just eye-catching and I loved it and I started conversing with the artist about it and they DM'd me and they were like hey you know I checked out your website and I really like what you have going on as a press what kind of books are you looking for I know that your subs are closed and I was like yeah you, I, you know our subs are closed and we were just having a conversation back and forth and I got really invested in them and I said you know if you're willing to wait 
until 2025, you know, and we're talking, we were talking to each other in 2022. And I just feel like that's a really long time to ask somebody to wait, even though that's the average waiting time. They said, yeah, we're willing to wait. I'm, I'm willing to wait. And I said, okay, right on send me your book. I read their book and it needed some developmental work as most books that I just purchase off of getting to know an author. I know that there's probably going to be a developmental journey and you know how much I love uh, first time authors and being open to that. I think the next podcast I'm going to, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about how to handle the, the editing process because it, it can be rough. Um, but I find that it's, it's just so rewarding and I love investing in first time authors and especially an author that's been trying to get their book published for a decade. And we have several authors that their journey was a decade long. That's why I tell people don't give up, believe in your artistry, believe in your, in your talent and get to know people and talk to as, as many people as you can. And so when it comes to pitching your book, if somebody is liking social media posts, the thing to do is to respond and start a conversation with them about it and then check out their website, check out their feed, their social media feed and see what they have going on and ask them questions about their point of view on writing and literature and just have a really casual conversation and then say, hey, would you be interested in publishing my work or would you be interested in representing me? Don't start with the hard sell and the hard pitch. For me, I have some authors that come on too strong, too fast, and it shuts me down. Um, like will be, I'll like a post that they have on their timeline that is not specific to any pitch. Because like when you're doing a pitch, you know, hey, if I like it, I want you to submit to me. I want you to query me. But if I'm just liking something that's not part of a pitch contest, that's an opportunity for you to start a conversation with me rather than do a hard sell. So I find the soft pitch is more effective with my temperament and easier to get my buy-in than having, I like to a post and then you hit my DMs. That, and you hit my DMs with, hey, I've got a book, do you wanna publish it? What you're going to get in that case is you're going to get, I'm sorry, our subs are closed until January right now, currently in August of 2023, they're closed until January of 2024. And I'm probably going to have to extend that a bit because we don't have any openings until 2027. And so I like to open our subs when we can get a book published in a year is when our subs are open. And I also open our subs when all of our known authors, all of the authors known to us that we have relationships with, I ask them first if they wanna be on the calendar before I open our subs. And that's another barrier that I think that a lot of authors are unaware of something that we do is that submissions are closed means several different things. When agents are closed to new clients, and when presses are close to submissions, there's different levels of close. Like right now, we're hard close, but I have to be honest, for the books that, we, that are part of a series, if an author wanted to add a book to that series, I would put them on the schedule because that's a continuation of the series. And then there's a close to people that are known to us. And in that case, um, we had an author that had written a book with us and they said, hey, I'm writing this other book that wasn't part of a series. Would you like to publish it? And I said, sure, but you know, it's gonna be several years out. And they were like, that's fine. They were fine to wait, you know, a couple years to get it published and that's great. And then there's the submissions are closed for authors we know and friends of authors we know whereas um and that happened to us last year ourselves were closed um an author that we had worked with whose book got away um i always think of it as the one that got away we couldn't 
quite close the deal, but we still have a very friendly relationship, still love their book, still support their book and, and the work that they do. They referred a, an author to us and I read the book and I enjoyed it and we had a developmental process and their book will be coming out with us, um, I think next year. So that those are the different levels and that's what you're coming up against when you're looking at pitching your book and i think it's important to keep that in mind because i want you to start thinking about the relationships you're creating and the relationships you're not creating and that's more important if you go to an author's reading right if you if your local if your local bookstore has an author who is giving a reading of their book and you're also an author, that's a great opportunity for you to go to that reading, talk to the author, get to know them, and get them to maybe do a blurb in your book and maybe introduce you to their agent or maybe introduce you to a press and say, hey, I've met this author, they were really cool, um, I read their pages, what do you think about giving them a chance? And that is another way that you pitch your book. So it's not just always the hard pitch. For me, it starts with relationship development first, and then mentioning that you have a book, getting to know something about me, getting to know something about Cinnabar Moth Press, saying something meaningful, um, interacting with our social media, interacting with our authors, developing those personal relationships so that they can advise you on how to approach their agent, so that they can advise you on how to uh, approach their press and tell you what's the best way to do it. And all of this happens before the query letter ever gets written and ever gets sent. And if all of this goes well, you never have to query. Instead, you're just in the lane where you're pitching. And if you want to draw attention where it's more passive and you're just putting information out and you want to catch someone's eye, then that is about being on social media and it is about really creating striking images. And so for me, I want to give some rules of thumb for mood boards. If you're trying to catch my eye with the mood board, if you put a person's face on it, I feel like all the mystery is lost and I don't even read the tweet that goes with it. I'm not saying that to be mean, I'm just sharing information that is specific to Christopher and Cinnabar Moth Press. This is the case also for some of the agents that I know, but not for all of them. Some of them really like having a character image on it. So you just have to think about the type of press that you're going and know that you can't do anything that's gonna please everybody so the main thing is with creating a mood board have it be true to you have it be honest to the story have it fit the story that they're going to read that's associated with that mood board because bleak falls is dark but it's also funny and quirky and engaging and i just i love it i'm just so in love with the world that it's in and and all of the characters and the mood board really fit well. It just was a really good represent representation of the story I was going to read. And when it comes to like the, I love bullet points. And for me, if you can do a bullet point, like, you know, deal with the devil, sacrifice of self, uh, time travel, whatever, just like some quick little snappy thing, 200 year old werewolf, just do three or four of those and then give a really great tagline for a book that will catch our eye and draw us in and give a little bit of what to expect. And all of our books have a tagline. I'm going to put a link down to Cinnabar Moth Press, our website, um, for you to just go and check out all of our Cinnabar Moth books that, that have, because they all have a tagline. And the reason that they all have a tagline is because we put them on Book Sirens. And Book Sirens has, give us a tagline and make it witty. And so that sort of just develops the habit. But it's also really great to use in promoting of the book. And it's also really great for tweets. I will say that our first book has my favorite tagline. It's two, two sentences. 
Claire knows only bad girls shoot people and set fires, but being good won't save her best friend. And that encapsulates the main character so well that I just absolutely love it. And everybody has responded well and everybody, the book will wreck you, not my ruckus, will wreck you. But at the end of it, you will be satisfied and whole. I just warn everybody whenever I talk about that book. Because that was my experience. The book wrecked me, healed me, and then rested me gently to a stop. And I felt like, okay. And when I closed the book, I, I felt really satisfied. And I was like, okay. That was that was a rough but, but fulfilling ride. Having a tagline and having a mood board and having art that reflects all of that is part of pitching your book and it's part of drawing your audience in and it's part of creating an audience for your book before your book's ever published and before your book even has a deal that can make or break your relationships and your ability to have a successful query because i'll be honest when someone sends me a query i do go look at their social media and if there's nothing about their book on their social media and i don't know them their my entire relationship with that author is the query letter and it's really really hard to write a query letter that creates a personal relationship. And if that's your starting place and then you don't have social media and you don't have art and you don't have anything that tells me anything about you as an author, your recs in that query letter have to speak to me. Your, not your recs, your comps rather. Your comparison titles in that query letter have to speak to me. They have to be books that I know books that I love and books that when I read your first three chapters, cause I do a partial read for everything. Um, I always just do the first three chapters and that's pretty much the industry standard. Um, I advise when you do a query letter, do the first three chapters, but read everybody's query instructions. And then those first three chapters better be correct in <laughs> reminding me about those books I love because that for me is a huge disconnect where a lot of authors fall short when they finally get to that querying space. So basically it boils down to what I say almost every time I talk about selling books is it's personal relationships. The fastest way to sell your book is to make me care about you, the author. Um, because if I care about you, the author, and your book's not there, I will do a development deal with you because I'm invested in your success. I want you to have the thrill of signing a contract, having your book published out there in the world because I care about you and I want you to have a positive experience in the, the industry and in the publication process. And that makes me very protective of every author that we work with. I genuinely care about all of them on a personal level. And I genuinely care about their books deeply. I love every book that we've published. I've enjoyed reading every book that we've published and I have a relationship. And these characters are real to me. They become like these characters become part of my, my world and my universe as any good book does, right? So that's something to think about when you're pitching your book is think about what happens before the query. Think about how you can make those relationships and think about how you can develop yourself as a brand that's authentic to you. Because if your brand is, I'm not a brand, that's completely a brand and I'm, I hate to break it to you, but your identity becomes then what I'm connecting with. And I really genuinely like every author that we publish and genuinely care about them. And I think because we're a micropress, we publish 11 books a year, that that becomes super important. And I know for agents that becomes important. And I did talk with some with some people that work for uh, Big Four, and I was surprised to hear that that was the case even for them. And I'm like, but y'all are publishing thousands of books a year. And they're like, no, I'm not. I'm one person. You think I'm really 
de making a decision on thousands of books a year. And so looking at no matter what level you're trying to achieve, there's always a person behind that process. And that's who you want to connect with. And you want them to realize that there is a person behind your book and that's who they want to connect with. And that's what sells books. It's connections. So I hope this is helpful in the pitch process and has kind of opened your mind to understanding when the pitch process begins and how you can start pitching your book as you're writing it and how you can help people get invested in your story and get invested in you as an author. I want to thank all of our beautiful Cinnabar Moths for listening. You don't have to be a Cinnabar Moth. You can be any kind of moth you want to be. Or you can even be a butterfly. But I'm not Mariah Carey and I'm not trying to bite her rhyme. Bye.